I was raised in chaos. My my dad was addicted to drugs my whole life until I was like 15 when my parents got divorced. I'm just used to people being on bullshit. Mm. Like literally, no matter how much you help them, love them, talk to them, I just know when an opportunity presents, they will take advantage. I've literally seen my grandmother give me money for my birthday and my dad come up with a reason why he needed it for some fake reason just to get drugs. I expect it. But expecting the worst, like, that got to be a strain. Even outside yeah. of just, like, engagement, what about clients? Like, what about, like, friends? Yeah. I'm not even going to hold you. Because when you do that, when it does go sour, which, honestly, it does more than it doesn't. It's rare to find people who stand on business, who stand on their word, who are genuine, loving, caring with no ulterior motive. I honestly, it, it's rare to find it, you know? Um, and so even with being engaged, like, at some point, I'm not saying it's going to end because we're going to break up, but even if it ends from death, I just expect that. Like, if he dies before me, I expect that that's going to happen, right? So it keeps me a little bit detached, which I prefer. It helps me feel safe to actually enjoy it. If I feel too attached, I honestly don't feel safe. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram, posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J. Hill. J. Hill Podcast. We in the building. A special guest is here. Stormy Banks. What's going on? What's good, man? Professional grant writer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is a professional grant writer, man? Come on. What is that? Like, I never heard that in my life. Like, professional grant writer. Yeah, because there's people who write grants who don't actually follow the regulations, the code of conduct, and, you know, all of the different things that are put in place. So when you say professional, mm -hmm. that means you actually follow the ethics and codes and morals, right? Okay. So when we say grant writer, grant writer is someone who essentially helps you prepare documentations to submit for money. Mm -hmm. So we begging, right? We professional beggars, if you really want to put it that way. I like we're, that. We're I like literally that. getting money for businesses by writing up documents and articulating their narrative in a way that shines the best light on the business. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Okay. How many grants you you think you wrote so far? How long you been on this? Uh, 2021 is when we launched Pink Print. So it's been three years. March was three years. That's interesting. Why? 2021. Mm hmm Talk about it. It's, that's a weird time to talk about because that's, that's like coming out of the pandemic. Mm hmm So it's not pandemic, but it's still a little bit of pandemic-ish. Okay. What made you get into it? Yeah, so craziest thing is when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. I was a hairstylist prior to for many years. Pandemic hit New York, we was literally shut down for like six, eight months, mm -hmm. right? Nobody could work except for, non for essential workers. So I wasn't making any money and I had to maneuver very quickly. So I went to Tennessee and I decided to work in my homegirl salon because Tennessee was still pretty open. Ended up working with her, doing a lot of things. She ended up robbing me. That's a whole nother story. But that is what led me into, you know, getting into grant writing. I got robbed in August of 2020. I started my company in March of 2020. How did she, I know you told the story a million times. Yeah. Like, was it like with the strap, like big gun or like no, no, no. you just stole your money? Thief. It was sneak thief. So okay. I learned so many lessons for that. I honestly, I thank God so much that it happened. I think it was the best thing that could have ever happened in my life. Mm. But um, I went to Atlanta to go scope out salons because I was like, girl, I'm making money. I'm saving up. Like, I'm about to go to Atlanta. I was on FaceTime with her, showing her everything. You know how you do with your homegirl, whatever, or your homeboy. And 
came back to the apartment we was both staying in, the keys on the door, my keys didn't work on the door. Mm. So she had changed the locks. Immediately, I'm already understanding, okay, it's two ways this could be going. Yeah. Calling, 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 no answer. Now I understand which way it's going. So I kicked the door in, right? I'm kicking it, like, full force, knock it down, go in, straight to my money is gone. It was gone. Because I had it in the closet. Crazy. Which was dumb on my part, but it was what I was doing at the How time. How much money was it? It was 50000 She just stole 50 bands. Yeah. You never seen her again? No. You ain't still looking for her this day? To this nope. day? Nope. Because I feel like Tennessee, is that a southern state? Southern, yeah. So I'm pretty sure the gun laws is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where she at. Like, it's not like it's a hidden secret. That was my best friend of 10 years. I know where her mama stay, her daddy stay, her brothers go to school. I know where she at, but have I seen her out and about? No. What's her phone number? Let's call her right now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know her number. You don't know her number? No. That's your best friend? You don't got I her got old a number? I phone, everything. Shit. I can tell you her Instagram. What's her Instagram right now? <laughs> I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> Say it on camera because they need to go I'm going to tell you off camera. Shit. I'm going to tell you off camera. Damn. Yeah, I can tell you off camera. So she that. stole 50 bands from you. Yeah. So you're like, man, I need some money. Let me write a grant. Why not take no. a loan? It didn't It didn't happen that way. A, I didn't have credit at that time. I, didn't, I wasn't focused on that, right? Didn't have good credit. My company from uh, New York wasn't making any revenue because nobody was working. So mm -hmm. I was just making kind of like side money basically. So a loan really wasn't an option. Banks be wanting you to have like $150,000 every year before they give you, you know, for two years straight before they give you a loan. Mm. I didn't have that as an opportunity. It wasn't even like, oh, let me go write a grant. I didn't even know about grants. I ended up just sitting in my mother's house for six months before I started my company, just researching all type of opportunities, finding different ways, trying different things. I even fell into a scam before. Mm. You know how they do the cash app scam? Yeah. Send me $100, I'll send you that. I did it everything, right? I was literally just trying to get my money back. That was my whole focus. Can't believe it happened one day. I was on a computer and I fell into a congressional hearing. They had a live congressional hearing where they was literally like passing bills and laws. They was like, okay, how much are we giving to education this year, the education department? We're giving $300 million to the education department. We're giving $100, $100 million to the agriculture department. I'm like, so where does that money go? I started looking up the departments. They giving that money out to, you know, small businesses, states, nonprofits. I'm like, wait a second. This might be a, a ticket. Mm. So I fell into it. I started just researching grants, found some grants to apply to, and just started applying, going crazy. And that's kind of how it happened. Damn. So uh, I, was it hard <laughs> to do? At first? You know, honestly, at first it wasn't hard to do because... I've always been creative, like coming from an artistic background, I always knew how to sell. So like being a hairstylist, I felt like I got all the right skills to become a grant writer because for me, I look at grant writing as sales. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to sell somebody on who you are to, you know, entice them to give you money the same as you would with a customer or anybody else. So what are you going to tell them? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just literally reading the question they're asking me and thinking, what do they need to know to give me this money? That's my only thought. What do they need to know to give me this money? Not what do I want? What's my desires? No. What do you need to know? Mm. And that's how I approach my whole strategy. So I've literally coined a formula that works. It's literally so good because I look at it like sales. So you don't need credit or anything to get a grant? No, definitely not. And anybody who tells you that you need credit they about to scam you. 100%. I don't believe this, bro. Hold up. <laughs> I'm always looking for, like, some type of, like, hold up. I like that. How I know you ain't scamming me out here? Yeah, I like that. So the way you know that a grant writer isn't scamming you is, A, they're not taking a percentage of your grant. That's a scam. That's against federal regulation. Nobody can tell you, oh, yeah, I'm going to win you a grant, but then just give me 20% of the grant. Can't do that. The other way you know somebody's not scamming you is you should get everything that they wrote up. Right. Mm -hmm. If you wrote something up for me or you applied for something for me, I should get email confirmations from the companies. I should get a full proposal write up. I should see what we're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Full transparency. It's not a I'm not making up where to go. The stuff is online. I'll see the link. You can go see it for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are the easy ways where, you know, like, OK, it's clearly happening. How it's happening. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? How much money you got yourself in these grants? I do six figures a year in grants. A year. And I tell people all the time, I did that in 2021. Mm. Once I was like, okay, I made zero dollars that year from actually work from like my company, but had six figures in grants, put it on my tax returns. Then I went to the bank and then they was willing to give me 
loan opportunities, I said, no, this is a ticket. <laughs> so this is like on a side, I'm assuming, because like you said six figures a year just from grants, mm -hmm. but you still do other stuff. I mean, you have your company. Um, you still doing hair and stuff or no? No, no, no. I've, that's done. So let me say six figures, though, because I could be like low six figures. It was like $106,000 my first year okay. that I won. But now you're right. doing... 200K, 160K I, in those ranges. Like, What's your average uh, grant that you're getting when you're applying for? 25,000. I typically go for 10,000, 15, 25. Those ones award the quickest and they're the easiest to write up. And I could easily... So you can give me a $10,000 grant right now? It's not going to happen right now because there's an open date, a closed date, and then there's an application period where they're actually going to give it to you. It's going to take like... 90 days, honestly, for them to actually tell you who won the award. Oh, okay. So it's not going to happen right now. Absolutely not. What's the what's your like percentages of like winning somebody a grant? Last year, we had a 94% win rate. Damn. And that's not 94% that I'm going to get you right here. A yeah. grant. That's 94% out of all the, the clients people. we work with. So if we worked with 1,000 clients, 994 of those clients won How many clients some you type of grant. Year? Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Countless. Straight up. You told me 94%, so you can give me a number. No, I really can't even give you a number on how many clients we work with. Because mm. there's some people who sign up to work with us, and then they be like, oh, I'm not going to actually, um, you know, go through the process of, uh, you know, filling out the questionnaire because I don't have everything situated. Because you got to have some stuff in order, like website, social media, like basic stuff. But a lot of people just don't be doing that part of the business. But, yeah, it's countless. Mm. Yo, you say you learned a lot from your uh, your best friend robbing you. Yeah. When the last time you, you... I know you know the story. When the last time you looked at one of your interviews and you talked about the story, when the last time was you did that? Watched an interview of me telling the story? Mm -hmm. I haven't. You haven't at all? I never watch a full interview back front Damn. to back. Shit. You do? You be watching all yours? Mm -mm. You mean either. Yeah, I was just curious. Because I was wondering, what is something that you might have thought? Like, I know you talked about it a hundred times, but sometimes we talk about things and we be like, man, you know what? I, like, you learn something from telling a story that you probably ain't even processed before, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you learned anything differently that you might not have spoke about, but you might have recently learned, mm -hmm. even though that situation is old, though. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't tell you because I don't rewatch them, but I know what I did learn is like, don't tell everybody everything. Don't tell anybody everything. You know, I was so transparent and open with her. I'm so guarded now with, like, information that I give. Like, I'm very particular on what I tell people because pers about personal stuff because I know that they'll use it against you one day, mm. you know. Um, also, I learned how to manage money better. Like, I'm so economical when it comes to what I spend my money on. I literally would be like, that bar of soap is, uh, you know, it's $5. I'd be like, man. Can I make that myself? And, you know, I'd be, like, so cheap, like, wow. frugal to the bone, you know, just because I understand, wow, I had $50,000 that I literally lost, <laughs> like, mm. was taken from me that I could have did all these things with, and it's taught me just the value of a dollar so much, you know? So, like, those are, like, some main ticket points that I've learned from that. And then also just getting from that situation, I learned my strength a lot. Like, I'm like, damn, I really got robbed, and I'm up. Mm. Like a lot of people don't come back. And I came back like by the end of 2021, I was up. Mm. Had bought my first property, like had my own place, had my own car, like was teaching people how to do it, impacting my community. I was dumb up. I'm like, it ain't even been a year. Mm. So I just learned a lot about myself. No, nah, facts. I think, um, Bro, situations like that is super important because you it's like you need situations like that to to really be successful or to like just situations of triumph in general, right? You mm -hmm. got to go through something to get through something. And but from my experience, like I've went through a, a a few things like that. But still to this day I don't feel good. Like I think about it. Like when I got Absolutely. fired one time, and like that was like my dream job and I still be thinking about it to this day. And I'm doing six I'm I'm, being, I'm successful. I'm mm -hmm. doing really well. But I still be like, man, fuck them niggas. Yeah. I was wondering, like, do you still think about that, though, at all? Like, your friend, not even just the money. That's a friend. That's a best yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I can, it, being completely honest, it faded from my mind 
uh, you know, over time. But it definitely, when you re- if I really was to sit and get into it, yeah, it, w- it would hurt. But now I kind of compare it just to what if that didn't happen? Like, I really look at, damn it, okay, if that didn't happen, what would I be doing right now? Like, would I be in this position? Would I be where I'm at? And I think that that kind of trumps the negative part of it. Because I'm like, I kind of feel like I had to lose her in order to really, like, shake off that dead weight and excel. Mm. Because the things that we used to talk about, oh, yeah, let's go to Atlanta, some rich niggas. You know, like, that shit was toxic. Mm. And it wasn't getting us nowhere. And now... I don't even consider the type of stuff that me and her used to talk about. Not even because I'm where I'm at, but because she's not around. Mm. So I'm like, I'm actually happy. I'll be like, literally, thank you for robbing me if you're watching this. Mm. Because it changed my life. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know, man. No, you're right. (laughs) that's That's just a hard pill to swallow. It is. Because, like, like you know, sometimes, even in relationships, like, in general, like, I feel like a lot of times we are with somebody or uh, we keep these relationships because of time spent. And, like, you just dwell on that time spent. But a lot of times, man, that shit be holding you back. Every time. And it's like, man, to think about losing one of my best friends because we just, I don't know, not on the same page. I don't want to do that. But sometimes we got to do that. Yeah. Mm. No, you. It's it's so necessary to be in the right environments and with the right people, and like you really do become what you spend your time consuming. Mm. And that's not just food. That's people. That's thoughts. That's books. That's music. That's everything in your whole environment. Even if your environment is cluttery, mm. like mm. dirty, junky, it's like you just have a disorganized mind. Mm. That's why when it comes to like my house, I don't play about that. Like, I have to be in an environment every day that I can feel good in so I can think with clarity, Mm. move with intention, and just feel at peace. Mm. That stuff is too real. Let's uh, take a quick break real quick. Yo, this episode is sponsored. This is my first time ever doing something like this. This episode is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and I got y'all some drinks, right? Uh, I wanted y'all to taste it. Tell me what y'all think. Also, while we're doing that, shout out to the Procreative. We're in a space. If you like this space, you're looking to record. Make sure you hit up my guy. What is it, uh, Joe? The Procreative's on Instagram? Yeah, at the pro underscore creative. At the pro underscore creatives. Make sure you hit him up. Taste it. Tell me what you think. Tell me, hey, don't lie. When I do sponsorships, I do real sponsorships. So they're going to have to take the good and the bad. So you tell me exactly what you think. Tell me if you like it or not. Well, I'm not a connoisseur, but I like it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it has like a sweetness to it, but it's still like, you know, reposado. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it goes down pretty easy for mm-hmm. me. And I think especially if you did it mixed, I think it would really be popping. No cap. No, I was curious. A lot of people said they like it. Like we've been getting a lot of good reviews on it. Yeah. Shout out to my guys at Los Hermanos Black Owned Businesses. Rock with the people that rock with you. Yo, um... Talking about friendships, you come down here mm-hmm. in Atlanta. You're from New York, right? Mm-hmm. You come to Atlanta, you get to it. You get busy writing grants. But I feel like in this space, this especially Atlanta, there's like a lot of entrepreneurs down here. I mean, more than I've ever seen in my life. It's like, God damn. How do you like it? Like, are you, because we talked about it off camera and we could have the same conversation, but like, how are you building the, the relationships? Is it is it good? You liking it? it nah, how you feel? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> relationships is important, you know? And I definitely have expressed to the people around me, like, I'm ready to be out of Atlanta, like, ASAP. Mm-mm-mm. I don't think Atlanta is really trying to be community-oriented. You in my head or something? For real? You think of the same thing? It's your interview. it's about you I'm sorry no for real I don't think it's trying to be community I think they use those words to like buzzwords to like yeah it's a woman empowerment event or yeah this is a community like yeah pay me 50,000 to join a community this ain't no community this is a graveyard (sighs) these people are drowning in debt trying to be a part of your community where they barely even get the chance to talk to you Mm. 
Where's the community in that? Where's the unity? Where's the communion? Mm, mm, mm. So I feel like Atlanta is um, it's 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 a place where a lot of people you know. They come to thrive, but they lose a lot of human touch, like genuine human touch. Mm, mm, mm. For real. It's like everything is all about what you can do for me type thing. Absolute. And it's like, I get it. I understand. But like, God damn. It's like, like you said, they lose like the human touch. I feel like. It's a bunch of robots down here. Absolutely. It's like, man, I'm trying to get to this bag. I'm trying to do this. Trying to get to this. everything is about the bag. And I was gonna ask you about the uh, like the woman empowerment events because I mm. feel like I've been seeing, I've been seeing women now, not before, but like calling them out. Like, man, this ain't really no woman empowerment. You mm -hmm. just trying to get a quick bag. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, I don't. Know, I feel like it might have slowed down now because I feel like now we're coming all the way out of COVID, the COVID yeah. and we really seeing who's really about it and who's right. not. Right. For facts. Yeah. So it's like. It's starting to die down, but I was just wondering, like, are you still seeing that now? Those quick plays? I feel like niggas don't got no money to do that no more. Yeah, no, for real. Yeah, people got to switch up their strategy. Yeah, and you like, seeing the people scrambling a little bit. Yeah. And I love it because this is the time where a new generation of people emerge mm -hmm. because everybody's scrambling trying to, you know, get on solid ground because what was working is no longer working, so nobody has it on lock anymore. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be about the people who can be innovative and come up with the next strategy that's going to be what takes everybody on the next wave. And then everybody jumps on and yada, yada. But to me, man, I can't even tell you. I got so many stories. I got so many stories. And the craziest thing is it'd be so slight. It'd be so slight. Give me some game. Talk to me. You'll be at an event. No, 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 no. Hold up. Okay, what you want That's me to That's real that back. We ain't on no hypothetical shit. We ain't on that. <laughs> you was at the event. Uh-huh. What happened? I was at this one event. I can tell you exact. Come on. Okay. So when I was first coming on the scene, I went to my first event. This was in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I had literally flew in from New York. And it was two women's event that I really was inspired by. Like, I would watch them on Instagram. I would see them get on live. Like, no, for real. I'm just the interviewer. I just want to know who is it. <laughs> I'm not dropping no names. I can tell you that. No free promotion. One thing you got to know, I'm a politic for life. Like, I'm never going to put nobody's name Jeez. out in, in, in there. You Jeez. know, I, I'm, I'm always going to keep it very, very clean. Okay. All right. These two yeah, very women clean. that she was inspired by. They um they had this event and it was advertised as women empowerment. This amazing event you're gonna learn so many gems. Let me Google this. First and foremost, what year was it? <laughs> sorry, all right, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right, all right, two women event. I'm sorry. When we get in the event, first off, they run an hour late. For me, that's a turnoff. You know, for me. How much did you um, pay? The tickets was maybe one ninety seven, if I can remember, or either like somewhere in there. And they was an hour late? Hour late. Once we got in there, we were sitting around. Now, me, I'm not going to hold you. They, it, it wasn't like we were sitting outside. We was inside just waiting on them to come and get the event started. I'm not going to hold you. That was a benefit to me because I'm a mover and a shaker. Mm -hmm. So I used that hour to network. I learned everybody's name in that room, got everybody's contact, everything. About 50% of that room ended up becoming my clients later on down the line. Mm. So for me, I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to make the most out of this. But still, you know, that's a bad look. Two black women. And they said they was going to teach all of this stuff. They was twerking. Mm. They were literally turning up twerking. <laughs> I was like... Am I being pranked? Ashton Kutcher gotta be somewhere. I literally was like, bum, like baffled, bamboozled. This is crazy. I paid one ninety seven to watch y'all twerk and turn up in, you know, fake gems. Like when they think they giving you some game, but it's like, we learned that on live. Like we saw you already talking about that on the real. Give us something that you're not telling us. Mm. We just paid to come and be here. And then, of course, it's the situation where, like, at the end of the event, or, you know, people acting like they're having a good time, but we didn't leave with no notes. The lady, one of the, the lady who was, like, the headliner, like, the bigger one of the group who was, like, you know, really reeling people in, she didn't want to hug nobody, take no picture with nobody. She was like, oh, um, 
talking to her assistant, can you get them to sign a release form or an NDA to take a picture because they can't use it, which I understand now. Like, she was like, I don't want y'all to use it for, like, ads and, like, stuff like that. Because people will do corny stuff. I've had somebody do that to me, and I'm like, bitch, I don't know you like that. Mm -hmm. But she was like, oh, me and Stormy, we host an event. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Anyway, but that was just weird energy. And I'm like, how are we women empowerment? And you don't even want to, like, touch us. Mm. So that was my first experience, but it's it's been a thousand and one more. I was gonna ask you, all right. So outside of the events, though, yeah. What about the not the fake community they, they try to build, though, like the real community, right? Mm-hmm. Is it any empowerment between women? Oh hell yeah, I got some homegirls that really be locked. Like I got some good homegirls. Now, one thing I understand now in life is like time does tell. You know, you could be very much in in love with each other one day and then turn around and an opportunity presents itself for them to take advantage of it, mm. you know? And I just expect that out of people now. But it's the ones that I feel like are solid right now, I do love them. Yo, you a strong boy. Like, for real? Yeah. Why you say that? Because you like you, cause you expect the worst out of every single thing. You expect niggas to break up. I expect them to just... It's like, <laughs> yeah. God, damn, I don't know if you're just a pessimist or you just like... Because <laughs> shit, like... If some, I don't expect... Ah, how can I get some of that? Because if I expect it, maybe I wouldn't be as hurt when it happened. Because I'd, yeah. well, I'd be ready to... Yeah. You know, actually, I was raised in chaos. Mm. Like, my, my, my dad was addicted to drugs. My whole life until I was like 15 when my parents got divorced I'm just used to people being on bullshit mm. like literally no matter how much you help them love them talk to them I just know when an opportunity presents they will take advantage like I've literally seen and I love my dad you know I think that he's a very charismatic person but I've literally seen my grandmother give me money for my birthday and my dad come up with a reason why he needed it for some fake reason just to get drugs I expect it. How is that in your relationship? And I know your fiance is here, so <laughs> this might. Hey. It, just like I'm talking to out. you, I talk to him the same way. And he could literally tell you everything that I've already thought. I, 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 I'm I a straight shooter with when it but comes act, to that. But expecting the worst, like, that got to be a strain. Even outside yeah. of just, like, engagement, what about clients? Like, what about, like, friends? Yeah. I'm not even going to hold you. Because when you do that, when it does go sour, which honestly, it does more than it doesn't. It's rare to find people who stand on business, who stand on their word, who are genuine, loving, caring, with no ulterior motive. I honestly, it, it's rare <laughs> to find it, you know? Um, and so even with being engaged, like, at some point, I'm not saying it's going to end because we're going to break up, but even if it ends from death, I just expect that. Like, if he dies before me, I expect that that's going to happen, right? So it keeps me a little bit detached, which I prefer. It helps me feel safe to actually enjoy it. If I feel too attached, I honestly don't feel safe. Mm. That's toxic as shit. You think so? Nigga, what? You just said, if it's too... Basically, if... Wait, 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 wait. So if it's too good... I didn't say that. Use my words. The exact words were, <laughs> you don't feel safe if it's... Uh, I'm sorry, what was it? Too attached. Too attached. If it's too attached, you don't feel safe. So when you say attached, what do you mean by that exactly? So I want to mm -hmm. go back this, this layer real quick. Yeah, like dependent too codependent okay. on one another okay that's not my preference i don't want to i don't want you to have to need me okay and i don't sense. want to have to need you that i don't sense. like that that gives me anxiety through the roof friends family clients fiance but in life some things sometimes things happen Mm -hmm. Right? And sometimes we might need people in certain situations. Right, but I'm I'm saying in, like, more with the fiancé question, that's, like, the long term, mm -hmm. right? Like, long term is, like, I need you to 
be here or do these certain things so that I can be able to like live. I hate that mm. with a passion. Even with my clients, how I move in life is like, let me educate you and edify you so you could do this even if I wasn't here. Mm. Cause you're not always gonna have me. Right. Like when my clients sign up to work with me, we literally give them master classes. Even if they just paying for the service of grant writing, master classes, grant lists, like consultation calls, walking you through it. Here's how to do it. Here's the process. Loom videos, showing them. I don't want you to need me. Mm. If you had to hire me to get the next step going, that's no problem. That's what I'm here to do. But I want you to understand because I don't want you to walk around in your business or your life and feel like if somebody's not here, a part of me is gone. Mm. Because once I leave, you should feel like, damn, I, I gained so much. Like, I'm better because I got to be around this person. And not because, you know, you had to learn the hard way, but because you actually really up mm. off of being around me. That's how I like to move. So when I see people, they're not learning. They're not growing in themselves. I just be like, yeah, I expect it. I know we talking about like grants and stuff. I'm just curious. Like, this is interesting as hell. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. This is this is, this is interesting. But well, what about you though? Like, what about in the moments where y you might not feel like uh, you are um, growing or like getting better, or like you might just not feel good. Like you got robbed. Like I'm pretty sure there's times where you just didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. Like, do you run away from people at that time because you don't want to feel like you're dependent? And whole time, they might not feel that way towards you. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious about that. Like, do you do you run away from it? How do you deal with those situations? You hit the nail on the head. Absolutely, 100%. I, um, like, when I got robbed, I had to stay at my mother's house. I had no other options. Like, I really needed her. But I used to lock myself in that room. Like, I used to be in that room all day, come out to take a shower, eat something quick, and just go back in. And she used to be like, you can come out and watch a movie and hang out. Like, I'm happy that you're here. Like, I love you. I want to be around you. And I used to literally, like, be a hermit. And I do that in every situation. I'm so reclusive when it comes to, like, I don't want to be dependent. And I think that's part of seeing my dad on drugs. Mm. Like, anytime I get too dependent on things outside of myself, I retract immediately because I, I want to be able to stand on my own two feet always financially, emotionally, family, like everything. Like, I just want to know that I'm good. Mm. How does your, like, I, I hope you're listening, but how, as your fiance, I'm just curious, like, how do, I'm asking as I've always him, like, how, how would he, how do I love you in those moments, even if I don't know? Because it's times where you might not feel, as strong. Mm -hmm. And how do I recognize that that you might be retracting? Like, how would that happen? You love me by giving me space. Like, just leave me alone. <sighs> mm. <laughs> just literally leave me alone. Like, mm. I literally just took, <clears throat> I just got back from a two-week solo trip. I went to Spain and I went to Italy. Um, and this has been a tradition that I've had long before my fiancé, but... It was so great to just be left alone. Mm. And it kind of came at the perfect time because it was my birthday trip, yes, but also I was very burnt out from work. Like, I was super burnt out. But I was just like, just leave me alone. Like, I'm not going to go against what we agreed to. Like, one thing you don't have to worry about with me is, like, if I said I was going to do it, I'm doing it. No matter hell, hot water, whatever comes, like, I'm going to make it happen. Mm. But I need you to leave me alone. <laughs> like, I don't, want you to, I don't want you to need me right now. I just mm. need to... Be with myself. It's like when they say you can't pour from an empty cup. That's how I be feeling. That's interesting, man. That's dope. I think um, it's some great, it's, it's greatness in that. It's power in that. Because mm. a lot of times, you know, I feel like we get dependent on each other as a, as a whole, as a collective. So sometimes when you hear you want to be left alone, at least in my mind, it automatically goes to negative, negative. Mm. Like, why you got to be left alone? Like, damn, like, what did I do? Or like, w am I not good enough for you to be around when you at your, your, your darkest moments? Why can't I fill that void? Mm. And sometimes uh, a lot of that is because you can't deal with yourself. So when you can't deal with yourself, it's hard to recognize somebody 
who just wants to deal with themselves. Mm. And that's why I'm listening. And I'm that's like, deep. I like yeah, that. that's why I'm listening. I'm like, damn, like, and the fact that that can happen and it and it be nothing, I think that's powerful. Absolutely. Mm. And I think it's healthy. Mm-hmm. Like even <clears throat> work wise, when I build communities, I literally tell people like, hey, when you get in my community, my goal is for you to leave and be able to go start your own community or do your own thing or like branch. I had this community called the Pink Print Posse. Mm. I had that community for a year and change, like maybe three, four months, year and three, four months. I loved those people in that community, but I also hated them so bad. Mm. Because when I tell you, they never stood on their own two feet. Few, few did. But I had thousands of people coming through that community. I'm in there every day, giving game, teaching, live, dropping quotes, inspiration. And I'm like, it's not enough of y'all making no changes around here. Mm. I don't want to be around people that's in a group to pacify each other. Mm. I don't need that. (laughs) I've never needed that. What I wanted to be in a group for is to be uncomfortable Mm. constantly, constantly pushing myself to levels I didn't know I could reach. Mm. What am I really here for? Like, you literally, I'm blessed to live right here, right now. And you telling me the only thing I'm doing is stuff that I'm okay with every day? I'm getting pissed off just talking about it. Yo, no, stay there. What do you <laughs> think What do you think the game is missing right now? Like, what do you think is the worst of the game right now? I of think, the entrepreneurship game when I say game. I think the worst of the game... Is this a lot of people making promises that they know they can't keep? Like what? And that's on the coach side and on the client side. Both. Is coaches saying that they can make you a million dollars? I'll make you a seven-figure earner. Build a six-figure business. Do this. Do that. I can help you with your money. It's a lot of people saying that they can get you to a position that sounds gloriful, right? And they don't. <laughs> You be a year in, two years in with that person, and you still kind of in the same place, mm. but in debt because it costs you 50000 to join. Or it be the clients who, I'm going to sign up, I'm going to do the work, I'm going to watch the classes, I'm going to do everything, and they let you down. Mm. And they don't end up doing shit. Every single time they come around, they got an excuse on why this didn't get happened, this didn't get done, this didn't get done. Both sides is tired. Mm. The coaches and the clients. How long you think this coach this 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 coach thing is gonna last, man? Do you see man, it ending? Or? I hope this shit end today. For real? Fuck a coach. Get that shit out the mud. I'm not gonna hold you. You're not taking money out your own pocket saying that? I don't coach. I'm not nobody's coach. Offer a service. If you need somebody to help, like, do the grant writing for you, we do it for you. Corporations literally pay six-figure salaries to have somebody source grants and apply for grants. So you wouldn't ever just coach somebody to, to, to do what you do? Hell no. Mm. <laughs> Damn. So you think you wanted this to end right now ASAP? <laughs> What's the point? People try to portray it like this. Okay, if you pay me, <clears throat> you're going to get access to my knowledge and my network that will help propel you forward, mm-hmm. right? And you're going to, you know, spend less time going through the process, right? Is a story in the Bible that I love the most. You know the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Mm-hmm. Three men thrown in the fire. When they came out, they wasn't burned. You got to get in the fire. Mm. A coach, and some people have been helped by a coach. But what a coach is going to do is give you something that you never got in the fire to get. Mm. You're never going to build the character to become the person who can sustain what you now have. So even if I get you the funding, even if I uh, help you build a seven-figure business, once I leave, do you still have it? Mm. Go get that shit out the mud. Mm. Go get your hands dirty. Go get in that fire. Go actually build character. 
Okay, so wait, you about to do a uh, what is it? A, the what, the class? What, what? It's a seminar. A seminar. Me on the outside looking, in, all this shit is the same. Mm-hmm. Seminar, coaching, fucking course, class, like it's all the same. Okay. What makes it different? My seminars are actual workshops, like. You but coaches in, be having workshops. That's they, no, no, all no, no, these no, entrepreneur no, no. gurus niggas be doing this shit. No, no, no. No, no, no. So first off, my seminar is five dollars for five days. I'm not charging a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars to come in. It's five dollars. Okay, but you want at the end you want to do an upsell, right? Absolutely not. And this is what I'm saying. I'm not doing no upsell. My services are always available, right? Mm-hmm. That's just normal. So if somebody comes from the challenge, it's like, hey, this was hard. I can't do it. I'm going to pay for, you know, the service. That's just normal. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I'm sorry, hold up. You about to do a seminar. Mm-hmm. You teaching them how to do grants like you do it? Absolutely. So essentially, you you potentially taking money out your pocket. Potentially. That's not taking money out my pocket. That's fulfilling my purpose. And my purpose is to educate others on how to get grants. You got to pay your bills, though. We pay our bills. We get grants. Our bills are paid. Okay. So you're <laughs> offering this, this, this seminar for $5. Literal. Because you're fulfilling your purpose. I, I, and it sounds cliche, but I literally woke up and God was like, I need you to do this because somebody that's going to get in that room... I'm going to bless them with something else, but I need them to learn this skill first. I don't know what it is, but I swear to God, I woke up and I was like, boom, I'm setting it up. I called my guy. I was like, set the funnel up. I'm pushing it right now. What funnel though? Because the funnel was to... No, the funnel is just a landing page. So I guess if you, however you want a terminology, like it's just a landing page to, you know, sign up. It's not like a funnel. To upsell, downsell, cross-sell. So you're having a seminar for $5, bro. Wait, hold up. (laughs) This don't even make sense. Why is it so hard to believe? It's a five dollar seminar. And you're not about to. Okay, if you come here, I'll you could charge for extra. You know, how, you know the entrepreneurship play. It's, shout, so, shout to Matty J to play. It's, <laughs> it's different ticket prices. Okay. It's different ticket prices, right? So it's a two ninety seven one, but I'm doing an in person two day. So like once we go through the five day, then we'll be in person together. If you're in Atlanta and you want to come, then we'll like go in person. But you know. Only reason why that one is more than five dollars is because I got paid for the space and it's just more, you know, costs that come with that. But okay. that's not like a let me run the play type of thing. Okay. That's just like a hey, let's just get the space, come together, and let's just apply the grants as a unit, you know, go through your strategy, go through your actual writing process and make sure you have this down pat. Wow. So wait, what so cause I feel like all entrepreneurs will say like their passion, their purpose, like I feel like I get that. Okay. What makes you different? What makes me different? What makes me different? What is these niggas talking? Y'all talking about? too much, doing God, too much. They, these niggas y'all right. literally confusing us. <laughs> we over here can't even lock in. in nigga, y'all in our world. Nigga, talk about so we in our own little world. Nigga, it's spilling over this moment. <laughs> the world is the room. <laughs> <laughs> y'all over there. <laughs> <laughs> God <laughs> damn, <laughs> that shit is loud. That shit was distracting me for real. My bad, y'all. But yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, what makes you different? Um. Okay, <laughs> refresh, refresh one last time. No, it's all good. Um, a bunch of entrepreneurs <clears throat> say the same stuff. It's my purpose, you know. Like this is just, I'm doing it for the people. Mm-hmm. Everybody say the same shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what makes you different? I feel like that's more of a show than tell thing. Anybody could come up with, oh, because I believe in God. Oh, because of this, and then you could make another excuse on what. Mm. Come to the seminar. Free ticket. Pull up. I'll teach you how to get grants for this. The podcast. I don't want a free ticket. Let's give away some free tickets. Absolute. I got five free tickets on it right now. No, 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 no. How many? Don't play with me. <laughs> this... It's just five dollars now. Hold on now, Hunter Slayer. <laughs> how long are we in? 46 minutes. They listen. If they if they listen forty minutes into this, give out forty tickets. No 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 no. I, <laughs> I need some two ninety seven dollar tickets. Some who? Two ninety seven. Oh, to come in person. Yeah. They could pull up in person. I need like three. Hundred percent. Give me. I said five. Give me five then. Hundred percent. If you listen to this forty minutes in, five 
Tickets valued at two ninety seven. Yeah, two day in person August. I think the date is August seventeen and eighteen. Best. I'm gonna oh, drop this oh, ASAP oh. just so y'all can have some time. Yeah. But I still want you to tell me why you different though. Why do I believe that I'm different? I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, why do I believe that I'm different? Actually, I've never been asked this question, so I haven't ever like calculated anything, but just like straight off off the top, why do I believe I'm different? I think it's because I'm super obedient. That was hard. That's fire. I think that's really what it be. Obedient to what? And who? My source. God. My everyday actions. When I tell you, like, and my fiance has a front row seat, so he'll tell you, like, even this morning, we was like, we're going to the gym at 7.30. It was like 7.45. I'm still trying to get these emails done. He like, we said we was going at 7.30. I'm like, I got to get this out of my brain so I can lock into the next thing. But, like, I got to be obedient to getting a job done. Like, just doing what I said I was going to do. That's very big for me, you know, just being obedient. <clears throat> and I think so... That's a big thing that makes me different because a lot of people, you know, like Kendra said, like you was bringing up earlier, you know, you pacify them. Mm -hmm. But I actually like inspire them and mm. educate them and edify them. Mm. So I'm not looking for followers lead, following me like this. I'm looking for actually leaders. Mm. Like I want to fuck with people who actually got some heart about them, like ready to make change and need the opportunity to get grant funding to do it why though i'm <clears throat> you know what, what it could be in all honesty there's i think there's a part of it that's like i really love i like being a big dog mm. i really do there's a part of it that is like when i walk around and see oh yeah i got that that business yeah you know, there's a part of it that is like that. Like, that makes me feel hype. Mm. Like, I feel like a person of value, not because of followers and this, but, like, to walk around, even Atlanta, it's some literal businesses in the underground that we've helped get grant funding to our business standing right now today because mm. we helped it. And I love that. I'm no, like, you right. eating there because we put that on. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like, that kind of... It feel good to help people. That's something sure. about that. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's I mean, something. that's real. I love the answer of obedience, though, because <clears throat> that makes me want to work with you because mm. like obedient, I think of dedication and like the opposite of dedication is probably like, shit, I don't know, laziness. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to work with somebody who's not dedicated and who's not committed, committed. Mm -hmm. That's another word I think of when I hear obedience. So it's like if I spend money with you, I know you're committed to helping me. You're committed to getting the job done. You're committed to fulfilling your word. And that's some dope shit to be a part of, to be honest. Straight up. So I think that's fire. 100%. Damn. And that was off the top. I need to get in the booth. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else is going on in this space that I, uh, I'm just curious. Like, my mind, I'm just curious because I, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs. And I mean, and I was, from my experience, I'm going to be real. Before I got to Atlanta, I thought like all of the entrepreneurship was like scam. I thought like every single one of it was scam. But I got down here and I, I started to understand and learn more that like coaching, for example, right? Because I know you don't like that. So I've learned that like you can become a professional in your space and teach people how to become a professional. And I'm like, okay, that's not a scam. It's just teaching somebody who might not be as ambitious as you mm -hmm. to get there maybe quicker. Because I know I didn't have nobody teach me. Mm -hmm. So like, and I wasn't going to pay for it. I'd rather just go on YouTube and learn. Mm -hmm. But there's some people who wouldn't want to do that. So you just fill in a, a space. Mm -hmm. How have you, but you, I guess you was already entrepreneurship before you got yeah, here. Yeah, I've been entrepreneur. Has it changed? Like, has it changed your idea being in Atlanta? Because I'm pretty sure some good that come from it. No? No? <clears throat> um, no. <laughs> Damn. I'm not even going to hold you. And not to rag on them, because it's some really dope people in Atlanta, like straight up, you know, who, who mostly the people who aren't from here. But it's, it's some dope people in Atlanta. I think for me, the thing that just bothers me the most is um, if you're going to pay somebody to do something for you, as far as like coaching, you you need to like, man, this is it's so crazy, but... 
you got to actually understand what you're getting. <laughs> For real. Mm. And I just feel like people just be, like, jumping in the boat and don't really be knowing what they getting out of it. I'm like, I had an opportunity. A deal was on the table for me to work with somebody. Ooh. And it was like, I ain't going to say no name. All right, I was just going to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Just check, make sure. I'm solid all the way through. So, <laughs> you know, um, and it was like, yeah, I got this opportunity to to do, you know, this 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 thing with you. And if I give too much information, they'll, it'll probably be known who I'm talking about. So I'm going to keep it real vague. But it was like, you know, I have this opportunity. But when we started chopping up about the business, what they wanted for me to do versus what they wanted to gain, it was very heavy on what I needed to do. And they was gaining a lot for a little. Mm. And um, I was like, talking business, right? I ain't no sucker, so I ain't going on no, no sucker shit. So I'm like, are you going to do this, this, that, and the third? Like, what's coming with it? And I ended up, the deal fall through, and I, somebody else ended up hopping on the opportunity, and it's whatever it is. But what I don't think people understand is the value that people could really bring you. Because, okay, you could teach me how to set up this podcast, right? And then I can go home and set up this podcast. But what if I paid you for you to bring me to every event you go to and introduce me in your network as, like, your friend? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to pay you you know, 50000 to learn how to set up a podcast. But I won't pay you 50000 I want every event that you go to, I want you to bring me with you, and I want you to introduce me as your friend to everybody we network with. That will do more for me mm -hmm. than learning how to set up a podcast. I feel like some mentorships offer that here. I've seen people like... Which ones? So, I'm different. I say names. Go ahead. So, um, for example... And I don't know this man business like that, mm -hmm. right? But let's say, uh, it's for example, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know this man like that. But I, I've seen, like, people brag about his uh, mentorship. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, like, I think I've seen one particular person he said that took his mentorship, like, be with him a lot. Mm -hmm. I've heard great and, things about him. Yeah, so it's like, I've seen people do, like, not just show you how to do the business, but okay, now you're a part of my crew. Like now you're a part of my team. And like, mm -hmm. I, matter of fact, I, I think I spoke to one person in particular, and he was like, "Yeah, bro. Like I started hanging with him after taking his, his mentorship, and it really turned me up." <clears throat> Did that person <coughs> make a certain amount of money before he got to hang? Before, right? You don't know the process. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I just know he was like, man. After it changed my life. Yeah, that I think that would be. I don't know either, mm -hmm. but I think that would be the ticket of is it. I'm hanging with you because I paid you or is it because I'm hanging with you because I've gotten a result and you like to show me off as a trophy of my stuff works? Wow, wait, wait. Hold I don't know, but, but I'm just saying. What's what's wrong with either or? Because I never even thought of that. What's wrong with either or? Because, like, if... It's a difference. That's so a difference. if you if I'm your trophy, right? Um. Hey, everybody, this is my student. They did a million their first year after joining my program. Yeah, talk to Benny. Benny made a million dollars uh, working with me other than hey y'all this this is my friend stormy like she's she's you know she's she's with me she's cool she does the grant writing thing y'all should chop it up with her that's a dinner that that's a different you know me because now i'm benny the student mm. the mentee and not benny the professional there's levels but you can't, I mean, can't you be a professional if you was the mentee and you made a million dollars from Absolutely. Absolutely. But the introduction matters. It does. Oh, the my The introduction gosh. matters. It does. One thing my brother told me a long time ago, my brother, you know, shout out to Brandon. He works for OTX. He's um like their general contractor for, you, you know, the OTX stadium? OTE? Oh, yeah, the uh, Overtime Elite Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's OTX, Overtime Boxing. But, oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, the, that's, that's whole, the whole thing. But anyway, he told me long ago. The way you get in matters. 100%. <laughs> I believe. And so when the door opens, I don't want you to be behind you. I don't want you to be like, yeah, this is my student. Mm. Like, nah, I'm... I'm big dog. I'm me. <laughs> you right, bro. You know what's funny? Because I'll be telling my, my peers this, and sometimes it come off wrong. I'll be like, bro, certain events I don't want to go to because if I'm not introduced as who I am, then I'm just somebody that... 
was standing on the crowd. And there's nothing wrong with people that stand in the crowd. I literally just had this conversation. But it's like, I'd rather not because if, if I'm on the outside trying to get in, they don't look at me as peers when I know we peers. And now when you do get in, you got to work your way up to change the narrative. Exactly. I don't have time for that. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> it takes more time to change somebody's mind than it does to just be introduced properly. Ex ex oh, my so gosh. that's mm. the thing. Is the program to show the trophies or is the program to actually bring you in on the level? I don't know, but mm. that's the thought. That's crazy. Damn. But, all right, so I'm just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> if I'm offering entrepreneur, still on entrepreneurship, if I'm offering something and it works and I'm able to show the trophies, I mean, that does say something about my business 100%. model. 100%. I would assume. Yeah. What's the success rate? That would be my next question. Depends on how many trophies I got. Versus how many people came through. Mm. I ask we that. always see Benny. Where's the others? Mm. I ask that because when I'm thinking about this entrepreneurship stuff, again, it'd be so many scammer words out there, scammer yeah. alerts out there. It's like, I don't know who to trust. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm just like, man, shit, I'm just glad to see Benny. Because if that's a success rate, then... I could trust it. <sighs> yeah, yeah, right. 100%. We got hundreds of reviews on our website on our platform. Mm. What we also have is the true story of people who didn't win. That's something that makes us different. Because I honestly will say, hey, this is Sarah. Sarah worked with us for six months. Didn't win a grant. This is her business. This is the structure. This is the model. So what we had to do is we had to rearrange Sarah's grant proposal. We had to go with a new strategy. But we're committed to working with her until she does see success. It's a lot of clients that we working with at this point pro bono because we want to try to see success. And some clients fall off because they get mad and do what they do. You know, that's how people yeah. are. We, I'm not going to chase nobody. But the ones who are like, hey, I didn't win anything, I'll be like, come on, let's, let's work together. Let's figure this out. Like, I want to at least try to get you to a point where you feel comfortable with what, what you got. Mm. Ain't a lot of people doing that. I'm admitting the right, wrong, and indifferent. That's dope. Yeah. We literally have on our website. Because, you know, when you go through the funnel, <clears throat> you on the page, oh, I won, I won, I won. Where's the people that didn't win? Because mm. those are the people that's at the events talking shit about you in person. Right. Those are the people that's under other people's DMs, and they's like, yeah, I ain't win that, fuck that bitch. You know? Those are the ones that you need to look out for, too. Creating Facebook groups talking shit about you. Stormy's a scam. I don't have that, but those are the ones that, that do that type of stuff. You didn't get the scam yet? No, I don't have no like Stormy's a scam Facebook page. Thank you, God. Okay. But um, those are the ones that be mad, and, and they don't even be mad because they didn't get the result. They be mad because nobody cared to help them get the result when they didn't. Yeah. So it's that little extra piece that be like, okay, okay. I can't guarantee you're going to win a grant. I'm a grant writer. I'm not the person giving you the money. I think I have a really great strategy. But if you don't win, let me know. How much do I have to pay you? Uh, is it the two, 297 or like? The 297 is is, is a one-off opportunity. Okay. That's for the one-off opportunity. You get the five-day mass class and the two-day in person. Before you tell me, uh, let's create something. Uh, I don't know what they got to do. Comment. Uh, I don't know what. What they got to do to get this three, five people, 297. For the massacre. How we gonna choose the people that win? Yeah. We gotta come up with something. How long we in, Joe? Um, um fifty seven minutes. Hey, fifty minutes if they listen this far. They give give them something. Okay, to choose the five people that could get in. Tell us in the comments why you deserve to win. Okay, cool. I Who like you're gonna that. pick from there. Bet. So finish saying what you were saying. Do you remember? Shit. Damn. My bad. It's I gone. apologize. It's definitely wow. gone. Where we was going? We was going somewhere with it. It's gone. <laughs> Damn, man. I'm it's sorry. Gone. No, no. I was asking how much? How much? Oh, like... do, I have to, do you have to pay me? Okay. The service starts at $597. Okay. For what grant, though? Anyone? So, <clears throat> so we do our packages like this. We can write the grant proposal for you because if you get a overarching grant proposal, you could use that for 12 months and apply to 
almost any grant other than federal ones because federal grants have a very specific format. But like all the corporate grants that come out, which this this lingo, I don't want to use like jargon, but like the easy grants people see on like Hello Alice or like Amber grants and stuff, like you can apply to that easy with one grant proposal. What is that? What is that? Amber Grant? Like uh, Hello Alice. Hello Alice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a website that you can use to find like other grants. Okay, okay. So like Hello Alice, Hello Skip. Those grants are super duper easy. Those are the grants that I always go for because they uh, they give the money faster. Um, now, you can use the same proposal. That's my whole strategy. Use the same proposal on everyone. If you do the $900 package, that's where we actually like still write the proposal for you, give you everything, but we also find and apply to three for you, right? So with the first package, we don't find and apply to any grants for you, but we do give you a list of grants, which we update, which is our personal database that you can use to, you know, find the grants, but we just write the proposal. People don't know it takes like 60 hours to write a grant proposal. Straight up, I swear to God. Man, with chat GPT now. You can't use that on grants. They have a system called Zero GPT, which uh, detects AI language. And grantors are using that because it's a competition-based program. They're using that to detect AI language, and they're throwing those in the garbage, like, immediate. Even if it's as low as, like, 10%, they're wow. throwing them away. So is 900 for, like, the highest package? 2000 is our highest, and that's when we do the whole process with the proposal, and we have find and apply to eight grants for you. And that's 94%. It's not 94% per person. Yeah, and that like has for to your be business. Clear. Yeah, yeah, that has to be very clear. Like, it's not, hey, you sign up, I 94% guarantee you're going to get a grant. It's not like that. It's from all the clients we've ever worked with. When I tell you, it differs per business, per time you sign up, because grants open and close. It's not even the same grants available by the time you sign up and by the time someone else does. There's so many factors that we have to really – be very clear that when you're signing up, you're signing up because you don't have the time, you don't have the skill set, and you want to work with somebody who can position you for better chances of winning. Mm. Not because you're like, I don't have no rent money, let me sign up so I can, you know, get get awarded by tomorrow. Now, are we confident in our skill set? Absolutely, hands down. But I don't want anyone to come with the feeling like, I'm going to get a grant. If I sign up, it's guaranteed. I never want anyone to sign up under those conditions. Mm. This is interesting, bro. Like, I never even, I don't, I think you're the first person I've ever even met who does this. Really? But, yeah, but I feel stupid because I feel like this is so, like, this should be the first thing we think of. Like, I didn't talk to people who, who can get loans for you, PPP, like everything. Yeah. Like, people charge you to do a PPP, and I'm like, that's a loan for me, so I got to pay you out of my loan that I got to pay back. But Speak on it. Like, I've, I've heard <laughs> everything. So it's like, the fact that I meet somebody like a professional grant writer, I'm like, why well, I ain't never think of that shit? Like, that's smart as hell. Yeah. Like, they told me that in high school. Like, man, if you don't sign for a grant for scholarships, college, they, yeah. And yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And they giving out that money, like, because you got to remember, like, the economy needs small businesses, needs businesses, period, mm. to be able to, like, thrive. So they got to support you. It's, it, I always say, the government is the best baby daddy you're going to get. Mm. No, nah, I don't say that because these baby mamas put niggas on child support because that's that's the government. That's the grant. That's some. The grant is child support. It's money you don't got to pay back. No credit check. No revenue needed. <laughs> don't listen to her. That's a scam. <laughs> if you're doing that, you scam me. You one of these scam. You an entrepreneur. Uh, if you're a baby mother with your with your with your baby father on child support, you a scam. If you a solo entrepreneur, you need to find the government as your baby daddy. <laughs> if you if you're a baby mother with your baby father on child support. You an entrepreneur at this point. <laughs> hey, god damn. You fucking scammer. Goddamn scammer. But nah, this is good, man. This is that, man. Did, did, did we miss anything? We covered a lot. This is good, bro. I, I appreciate you, man. Good. For the people that don't know, let them know how to follow you, how to uh, sign up and all that. What's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. This is your girl, Stormy Banks, and you guys can follow me throughout all social platforms at Stormy Banks underscore, and that's Stormy with an I. How many podcasts you been on, bro? That shit was perfect. Like, what the hell? You know, my fiance does podcasts, so we film and talk all day, so talking has become so natural. Okay, fiance. Yeah. You got to let me oh. out. You got to let me out.
love. Okay, fiance, you better you better say that. My fiance does podcasting. I mean, we were from all the time. This is fire, man. I appreciate you pulling up. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh shit. Um, uh, make sure you um comment uh under one of our posts, right? We're gonna do collab posts. We're hour in. If you did if you if you watch this far, you deserve a a, a a damn chance to get a grant. You heard what I said, a chance. So um comment on one of the collab posts we do. Uh just tell us why you deserve a um a grant. Ticket to the yeah, a ticket. Yeah. A ticket. Right? Tell us why you deserve it. It's gonna st- it's gonna stand out because it should only be the longest damn comment under the post. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, but whatever. Uh, Stormy Banks, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Make sure y'all check out the Pro Creatives. Termon, um, oh, Los Hermanos. I, bro, it's funny because I haven't drank and uh, I might block that out, but I haven't drank in so long that it's like I used to like Termanos, but I mean, um, I used to like what is it called? Shit, yeah, yeah. that shit. Los Hermanos, man. Black-owned businesses. We support who support us. We out. It's a wrap. <laughs>